This is uh, this is really exciting. Today I have Kelly Downey joining me. Kelly, I looked on the uh, computer. I think you joined April 29th, 2016. This is when you started. So what is today? 11-20-2019, uh, so about two and a half years. So welcome. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate you coming on and uh, and chatting with me. Sure, you're welcome. I'm glad to be able. I'm glad to be able to do it. I was a little bit apprehensive at first, but we're over that now, so it's all good. Good. Apprehensive, just being on camera and putting yourself out there. Yeah, it's, well, yeah, putting myself out there in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you know, doing what I do for an occupation. I I talk to a lot of people, it, you know, but being in this type of a situation, you know, where this is going to be shared with, you know, a lot of your other clients, sure. or potential people it, it's a little bit different and i just want to be you know totally honest and upfront and i've got a lot of experience both good bad and indifferent awesome over the year over the years i mean i my father got me started in investing back in 1993 okay followed the markets before that so i can remember things that you know like i can remember when uh, when the first when Desert Storm was, when you know, oil went from thirty a little over thirty dollars a barrel down to about ten or eleven dollars a barrel, I watched that on is what CNBC. You know, I can remember, you know, you know a lot of things, a lot of things like that. I remember gold back when I was a kid watching the news with my my parents when gold was you know first going to eight over eight hundred dollars. You know, so these are things that I have in the in the back of my mind. You know, just kind of stand out. And uh, like I said, my father got me interested in it. So, so you got into the market in, in 93 and we started working together in 2016. What was, Correct. What, what, what was going on where you were, where you were looking, were, were you out looking for somebody specifically to work with or were you just going on different webinars and seeing what was out there and seeing if anything could help you? Correct. So be, before that, uh, I just invested. I bought stocks and held on to them, and I had some really phenomenal success with that. Then we got into 2000s in the in the internet bubble, and that's kind of when, fortunately and unfortunately, um, I decided to just like cash out everything. Good. Um, the internet bubble be before it popped or, or after it popped? Yeah, yeah, right in uh, right in March of 2000. Good for you. Smart. Yeah, well, then that began my kind of slow descent, thinking, oh, you know, I started getting into some trading, you know, being just checking out some different internet forums. Then that began my slow descent of uh, paying the taxes on that money because that was in a brokerage account, wasn't in a retirement account. Sure. And that began my slow descent over about a three-year time frame of giving basically everything back that, that I had, you know, gained over – like a nine-year period. And what years were that when you were giving it all back? Well, that would have been like then later on in 2000 up until about 2003. And were you giving it back just because you were long stock and the market was going down? Well, no, actually, I had, I had cashed out of everything. And then I started, you know, trade, you know, just doing some different trading. And, I, and I'd never traded options and I did that all wrong. And then I, I, you know, I dabbled in futures and I did that all wrong. And then I tried to get back into stocks and it was just like death by thousands of cuts, you know, that right. push, you know, the cliche. And, and I took some, and I took some pretty big hits and it just, you know, then I, then I tried to rebuild. And of course that happened to me again. And then I just took a lot of time. I just had to take a lot of time away because I didn't have, I didn't have capital. Sure. Um, I had to focus on, I just had to focus on, you know, on, on business and working. Go back to the grind. Yeah. Go back to the grind. Yeah. And retirement was going to be very important for me because I, I didn't have anything. I've been self-employed, you know, most of my life. Um, and so then I needed to, I needed to re I needed to rebuild. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, and, and so when did you, after that, when you, when you kind of stopped trading, when, when did you start again? Uh, probably, let me think, probably just prior, like a, maybe about 2013, about 2013. Yeah. Okay. And then you still joined me 2016. So those three years 
Were you starting to get more comfortable? Were you playing around in options? Was it more of the same from before? Well, in my retirement account, because I have a self-directed 401k, up until recently, um, I didn't have the ability to, to trade. I didn't have the ability to trade options, so I mainly had to focus on stock. Okay. And, you know, and that's what started. That's what started out where I had success, but then I was kind of soured on that because you know you buy and hold something sometimes, and it, it just did. It seemed like there sometimes there's a lot more volatility, a lot more gapping, and I mean sure. I understood. I understood that, but the risk was was really larger for me because I had I started this account um, that that you see and I sent you some of my statements. I want to say back at the end of 2013, I put fifteen thousand five hundred dollars in. That's what I started with. So 2015, you start with fifteen thousand dollars. 2013. Um, 2013. Fifteen thousand five hundred dollar deposit to open my 401k to start funding my retirement. Okay, and so 2013, and where was that about in 2016 when you, when you started working with me? Okay, so at fifty six thousand. Now to begin to be honest, I took I did the bond I did the bond boot camp course in April 2016. Sure. So I I, I couldn't trade any. I, I really couldn't trade anything in there as far as that goes. And so I was pretty limited on what I could do, you know, and, and I wasn't still doing a lot of trading. I was just saving. Just learning. Some small, just learning doing some small stuff to get, get back we, into we, it. Just now, real, real quick, Kelly, the, the, the bond boot camps all bond futures. Were you trading futures at that time or it just sounded interesting to start dabbling in futures a little bit? It, it was something that I, it was something that I wanted to learn about again because of your experience if your experience in presenting it in a different way about right. how the interest rates have worked. Cool. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a great trade. The tough thing about that trade is it just takes so time. Was, so I was basically wanting to just start investing in my education, yep. just investing in education. And that's uh, to, to trade anything or to do any profession you need to get, need to get educated. It seemed that it took, um, 22 or 23 years for you to commit to that though. Right. And in the, the other, and, and we'll go, we'll fast forward a little bit, right? To, so when I started trading the stocks with you is when I did the annual membership. And I think that was like the end of October, beginning of November, 2016. Then that's when I really started trading the stocks again. And cool. looking, you know, working with the information on your news, on the newsletter, being a premier member. Right. And then so, with that, the premier membership, you start getting the trade ideas every, every Sunday. And then those trade ideas that we were sharing and that we do trade, what, what's the biggest difference between those trades and, and the style of trading versus what you've done in the past? Well, research for me was I used to, I used to read some annual reports. I had a lot more time for it. So I drive over the road and I own my own tractor and my trailer. I don't have a lot of time to, to dedicate that. So I thought, okay, if I, if I find someone and, and, I, and I didn't, I haven't had a lot of newsletter information like yours, but if I thought if I could find something where I could pay for a subscription and make it work, sure. you know, based upon no my, right. based upon my knowledge and what I've done wrong in the past and not do that and, and focus on what I can do, then it's worth it to me. Cause you know, would I like to have time to do research? Yeah. I just don't have the time to commit to that. So it's worth it to me to use your Absolutely. information. And then I, and then I pick from that what I believe I can do based upon the, you know, what I can do in my account. Right. Well, it works for so you. That's what I, it's, exactly. And that's what, that's what I've done. It's a, I mean, it's a great place. So people, use the service in a lot of diff different ways. I do, uh, I do have people who just take, take the ideas and just, and just benefit from the research and why not? I'm sitting there doing the, the, the research, might as well take advantage of that. Um, and then you, you, you get the trades and then if look them over, find something that resonates with you, with your account, with your temperament, and I imagine your understanding of the trade and, and whether, you, whether you think it's a real viable opportunity. Correct. But it must have taken a while to get, it's kind of a, a, a very um, evolved way of using the membership. Did that take a while or was that the plan right from the get-go? Well, that was kind of, that was actually the plan 
the plan from the beginning, knowing that I, you know, knowing that I couldn't do the options trades, and, and I'm going to tell you what I kind of reverse engineered something that's this kind of worked pretty pretty good. It's worked worked out the best with one stock, but uh, so the first thing that I remember really that worked out well was you guys did the options trade on Overstock.com. Mm -hmm. And I kind of missed the boat on that, even buying the stock. So I waited basically until it went up and came back down, and for you guys, the trade was over. And then I sought an entry opportunity, and that, that was actually even in the end of 2017. But I had traded AMD, and what were some of the other ones we traded? The DVMT, the Dell tracking stock. Well, that was awesome. That, that was you know, that was just wrong. I, Yep, Sarepta, but I got stopped out of that because I set stops in my retirement <laughs> account. Well, well, I still had a profit. I still had a profit. Okay, good. But you know, it, it, but I had, but I have, but for me, in there, because that's my future. Yep, I like I, 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 I have to have a, I have to have a discipline. I don't want to go from where I was before, like how, Absolutely. what I did before, and then revert back to that. I, I, that's not an option. And. and and just for those out there listening, we're talking about some of the older stocks from 2017. Correct. DVMT is the old tracking stock um, for VMware. Dell owns 80% of VMware. This was the tracking stock um, before Dell went public again. And we were in there at 50, it ran to 100. And then the Sarepta, SRPT, which is the big advantage, by the way, of trading options versus trading stock, because I imagine you stopped yourself out because you had stock. If you have options, you don't stop yourself out. It's just a matter of whether you're in the right expiration. Sarepta was probably the biggest return we've ever had um, since I started this company. Oh, sure. It was. Yeah, I remember. I remember when it, the, you know, the news came out. And then we did the YRCW. You know, I had built up my account where then I could do like, you know, a thousand, couple thousand shares comfortably. That is You know, awesome. and just, you know, then we did uh, what was next after that. AMD was a, was a good and there's another one. We were in from 12. The thing's trading 40 now. That Sarepta was yep. 30 and it went up to 170. So that was a, it was pretty cool because I, I got three different emails of clients making over a hundred grand on that one trade. So that was just really, really just rewarding. Um, and, and but, that, that's the other thing when you mentioned that, sorry to cut you off. No, please. Um, well, when you talk about other people having success now, I know some people look at that, you know, they might they might get jealous, they might think that's selfish. Now to me, that's something to be admired and respected and learn from because obviously somebody else is doing this and it works. So right. so that tells me that if you want to put in the time, if you want to learn, and also I'll share with you another little caveat here is the other biggest success that I've had over time is learning about my relationship with money. I don't know how that relates to other people. I'm gonna write that down. I love it. You know, but I struggled for a long time, and I and I uh, did another group. I did Love some it. live interaction with people. Where why was I having success sometimes, and then making mistakes and doing that? And you know, I was able to over a period of a few months, you know, figure that out. So I believe the psychological aspect, because it's all psychological. It's just like what you share with us. You can share it. You can show this successful, but if somebody else doesn't believe it, they're not going to be able to implement it. It's not going to work for them. You know, if, if I had one thing that I wish that everybody would just give me the benefit of the doubt, if I could just say one thing, it would be that 10 people take the exact same trade. You're going to have 10 different results every single time. And just like we're talking about Sarepta Pharmaceuticals, where three people made over 100,000, you got stopped out because it, it just, for whatever reason, bad timing or it didn't fit with your risk tolerance. It's also it very difficult. Profitable, it was still a profitable trade for me. Yep. I just didn't, it just didn't go, you know, when it, it got the big pop after the news, I wasn't in it. I wasn't in it then. And I'll be honest with you. I had an opportunity to reenter. I just didn't pull the trigger. Sure. So that's not anybody's, that's not anybody's fault, but my own. But it's, it, 10 people take the exact, and this is where I think people really get taken advantage of across the internet because everybody's promising these returns and without audited financials, it's all bullshit. And there's no reason to have audited financials unless you manage money and I don't manage money. I just, I just teach. So 
that would be the one thing that I wish people would just kind of slow down, understand that education is going to show you different ways you can manage a trade, but you're still going to have different results. It's, it's very similar to sports where you can practice as much as you want. Nobody can guarantee what, what your performance is going to be. You got to sure. find yourself well, out there in the field. Right. It's left, it's left up to you. And this is, and this is another thing I learned recently. So the only, so the only trend that really matters doesn't matter what an individual stocks do and what, what the markets do. The only trend that matters is the trend of your equity curve. Anybody else's individual equity curve and what they're doing to make it positive and gain over time. That's doesn't the matter. only thing that matters. Yep. Every, everything else is just, uh, it is just things to help you get there. Manage money. Don't trade the stock market. Trade, manage your trading account. And that's what, yeah, using the example, a $50,000 trading account, rather than have individual stops on your positions, have a stop on your trading account. Don't let it drop down to 46, 45. And if it does, tighten up your risk, grind, build it back up, and then you get to play the game. It's easier to trade with more money, but you have to, that's a luxury. You earn that right to do that. And too many people will have that 50 account goes to 42. They'll get a little bit more aggressive because now they need to make eight grand to get it back to 50. And that gets them in. That's, yeah. That hurts. Yeah. And when I learned to stop doing that too, just focus on the process that helped that. That's a good point you make that helped also. You so know, how, just, just Kelly, focus on the process. how did you learn that? Because it's one thing, that seems like something that you really can't learn from a lesson. That's something that you have to feel and, and, and just be self-aware and say, you know what, it's time for me to change a little bit. Well, being, being, being tired of the result that I was getting, that was the opposite of what I, what I want, that what I wanted to accomplish in, in, you know, in, in, and I mean, really want it. You know, people say they want something. They 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 say they want to accomplish something, but are they really doing? Are they really doing the work on themselves? And again, yep. I believe we're the primary factor. You know, in our in this spot between our ears is six or eight inches between our ears makes all the difference in the world. Are they really drilling down and spending the time to? to to take care of that and then following the steps they know that are going to get in there. It's, you know, you gotta, you gotta take action. Even when you're not comfortable, you ju it's just gotta be manageable. And, the, and I came some, I've, I've came from, you know, from some pretty psychologically devastating losses. I mean, so like, I'll, so the brokerage account that I had at Schwab that, that when I started investing with my father, which I originally put $35,000 in, at one point, that was three hundred thirty-three thousand dollars. When I cashed out of it, what year was that? That that was it. so. That was when I put initially money in in '93. Okay, back, okay, now we're going back. Peak, back. And at the peak, it was that. And then when I cashed it out and paid the taxes, I was left with about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I lost all that. Right. And that's you know, just... there's nobody to blame. But there's nobody to blame. You know, maybe blame me. And, and I know there's a lot of bad education out there and stuff, so you got to search through and find what's good and what's right. Not everything's going to work every time. But you got to be able, though, to, to just look at things with a more realistic viewpoint. And, and here lately, have I had some great success? Yes, I have. But also, and that'll get it, we can get into that part, what mainly – most of bulk of my gains came from like a half a dozen of of ideas that I got from you, and one of them was one that I waited patiently twice to get in again and just wrote it for quite a ways. It's entry points, and that's the key. Not that feeling of missing out by needing to jump in, but having that discipline and patience to wait and say, you know what, if it does trade this level, I'll get in, because you know we control our trading account. Problem is, instead of people waiting for that forty dollars to trade, they'll go trade it at forty-eight because they don't want to miss out. So and I held through earning, and I held through earnings, <laughs> which I I had a psychological problem with that because I had been burned so bad in the past. It's like you know what, I just got to manage the risk that I know that I can manage now, and I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on, and I'm gonna hold on. What, what gave you the confidence to hold those trades for so long? Because you're not part of the coaching community. It's actually interesting because you're probably the first person I've interviewed that is not part of the coaching community, but you've been a member for three years and, and you're taking the trades. What gave you that confidence to, to really just stand, stand tall and, and you had huge gains to be able to hold those trades for as long as you did, I imagine. 
Yes, I did. Uh, so, like, so again, working on my myself psychologically. I mean, I could throw out some good books, that, you know, that I've read. That I mean, I'll, I'll say anything by Mark Douglas, yeah. Van Tharp, um, Ari Kiev, uh, any of those guys' books. They're all good books that help you work on who you are and what your relationship is and how to, and then, you know, find your strengths, find your weaknesses. And if you've got negative limiting beliefs, you want to replace them with positive, useful beliefs. And it it takes some work. I mean, this type of work that we've been talking about, I've probably been working on this process off and on over probably the course of the last 10 years and mainly the last several years. When I was, uh, when I was with a firm, uh, told this story a bunch of times. Um, I was a six employee, we grew it to 200 employees, but I did hire a psychologist that would come in and they would work with, they would, uh, the psychologist would work with uh, the traders in teams of three to five. And something that we would have to do is everybody who worked at the firm, they would have a plan before the day started, a plan after, and we wanted to really see could you stick with the plan? Are you controlling your position or are you watching the market and letting the market kind of sucker you get into getting into trades that you didn't really love when you weren't staring at the market? And it's really hard to do. We found that people would come up with a plan and then their plan at the end of the day, they have all these excuses for why they did something that in the beginning of the day, it wasn't what they were looking for. And they, and they rationalize it to themselves rather than write down your plan like we do with the Sunday week ahead. That's really what we're looking at. Whatever else presents, you know what? That's not for us. We want to go back and, and, and trade right now. I love being long oil, finding different ways to express that opinion in the market. So if oil does go up 20%, we get rewarded. You can't be right in this business and not get paid. And that's, that's something that I work a lot on, on myself and, and through the years. And um, the biggest thing for me is even when we're talking now for my own personal portfolio, I have 30 different limit orders working in the market because stocks move. And if stocks make a big move, maybe it makes a big move and comes back. I want to get filled on that. So it's uh, I like how much you're talking about that. It seems like you're really getting comfortable and, and confident in what you're doing while still being humble. Yes. And, well, and that makes it so much, so much easier. Like the physician said, you got to plan. It makes it so much easier to, and to overcome, you know, just be willing to take small losses. And again, this is going to be a constraint. I'm going to tell you this quote, and I've pretty probably seen you put it in the room maybe before or not from Van Tharp, you know, like if you want to be successful at trading or investing, and I mean, really successful, you have to be willing to accept losses. It, you know, it's, Trading without taking losses is like trying to breathe in without breathing out. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's you're not going to have them. You're going you're gonna to have them. And it's just to minimize them to what you set that you're comfortable risk with as far as risk. I'm with some things comfortable with, you know, which is probably high for some people, about 3 or 4%. But there are some trades where I might only be a half to, to 1%. So I got a range of like a half to 4%. As far as your, your downside with. risk, 3 to 4% on, on any given trade. Exactly. And that's, and, that's, and that's factoring in as being a percentage of my overall portfolio yep. at the time. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I only mainly trade a couple, two or three things at, at a time. And, and I'll build a big, I, and this can backfire, but if you, you got that's where you got to be strict with your stops. Build a big position like eh, Overstock wasn't that great, but like with Roku and Dillard's, I mean, with the Roku trade, once you did the lockup trade and it, it came down and I started I started buying, you know, down there in the 30s, and I uh and then that went up to like I want to say and I kind of I would add to that a little bit. I I scaled up into it cuz I don't like to sit down through losses. I'm going to be honest with you. I've done that before and I suffered some major losses. So sure. anymore, I'd rather, I'd rather pay up a little bit and add into my trade as it's going my way. Cause instead of then, instead of compounding losses, I'm compounding gains. Sure. You know, and, 
you know. And it is true. I will ladder into trades, but I do that with more with the options. And, and you, you, when you have a pl you have a plan the reverse way, you're doing a third, a third, a third. So it's like ultimately you're doing a similar thing in a different way. And I get that, and I've done that before. It just works better. I'm just more comfortable finding sure. what you know works for me. Like I said, over time and doing it that way, and then selling as it rallies into strength and just start to trim back my position. I a think the bit important time. thing there is to stay consistent. If that's yes. your approach, stick with it. Don't go with that. And then sometimes you change because then you're, you're selling yourself. Well, no, yeah. Well, cause then you're conflicted in your mind about, well, I did this and now I'm doing this and yeah, yeah you're it, talking it yourself into, a, into a trade. So let's, yeah. um, you know, just, uh, get the exciting part out of, out of the way. Will you share? And I, and I really appreciate you taking a picture of your statements because everyone's so skeptical, but would you, would you share that kind of performance of your account over these last couple of years and, and just how you feel and okay. what you expect going forward? Yep. And so also to be, uh, since you didn't reflect that in there, you know, so I had some add-ins to my account from both my personal, um, you know, I take, money out of my paycheck every week it's monthly goes to my goes to that account and also i did profit sharing i haven't done any profit sharing this year so initially that i think i started with that 56 when i started with you and i don't remember now where i was at my account statement in october i think it was that you know so then i had add-ins uh up until and this includes this year of fifty one thousand dollars okay but that means then, based upon the other day when I sent you the screenshot, I've had gains of one hundred eighty-three thousand dollars. <laughs> so, so that was so that yeah so that so whatever that average is out to be like average about sixty-one thousand dollars, you know a year the last pretty much one hundred percent year year over 17, year. Seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. Seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. Yeah. Unbelievable. Did you and. It sounds like you got it up to where it was in the uh, in the mid nineties. Uh, well, yeah, that was my brokerage account. Yeah, so you could look at it that way. I kind of that's in the back of my mind a little bit, but now I'm to a point where. And, and here's the other thing for people that you know think think about it. If you gradually do that, it it begins. It, it gets to be a lot easier slow to take trades when you're slow and steady and you build up your account and you have a larger amount of money to work with, cause you got a freedom to do a, a lot of things, you know, and do a little bit of something here and focus on something else there. And um, I'm going to share this for probably people that understand this and probably people in your, in your coaching group. But if you have 1% of, of, you know, 10,000, you're going to risk a hundred dollars or $200. Then you get to a hundred thousand, it's going to be a thousand or $2,000. You get the, like the point where I'm at sure. now, it's going to be like twenty nine hundred or six thousand dollars. The the thing that people have a hard time wrapping their money around is they look at the dollar amount. But don't focus on the dollar amount when you have an account that size. Just focus on what percentage that is your account. It's not a greater percentage of your account than when you started small. Interesting. So it's a bigger dollar amount. You just need to you know if you maintain the percentage outlook. If you lose that 2900 it doesn't matter. I mean, really, because it's 1% of your account. You lost $100 in $10,000 accounts. It's it's 1%. You were comfortable with that. Just get comfortable with this. You got, in order to grow an account, that has to be the mindset. Because if you want to manage 500000 or a million, you're going to have to be comfortable with a, a you know, a 5000 or a, a $10,000 loss. Another thing we used to do at the, at the, at the trading firm, because we're, we're trading firms money, so we're having very big P&L swings, is sure. we, we would have newer traders look at them like 80% less. So instead of being up or down 20,000, they were up or down three or 4,000 just in their mind, but it really was 20,000, but they just wanted to, it was more comfortable. Even knowing that they were tricking themselves, it was more comfortable for them. And that's again, just, it, it's the same thing. And really, as traders, is another thing that just drives me nuts, all this short-term day trading out there. It's, that's not scalable. It's, it, you can't do anything with that. Maybe you can make a little money here and there on a small account. But what you're talking about is 
trading a very similar approach in a $20,000 account, a $200,000 account, or a $2 million account. It's, uh, it's infinitely scalable, the approach that you're using where you're being very, very patient and you're just looking for trades that, that you really like and you want to invest in. There, there is no really uh, amount that you can't scale to by using that, that approach, which makes a ton of sense to me. Well, it's how any big money manager hedge fund institutions, it's the same approach they take. The only advantage we got over them is, you know, they've got a charter that tells them they got to be fully invested right. or only a certain amount of cash. We don't have to do that. We can do it. Plus, we're, a lot more nim- we're a lot more nimble. I could probably get out of any position at a click of, a, of the mouse button. Now, would I get a little bit of slippage maybe on some things? Yeah. Depending on what it is. like On the options, the sure, but not stocks. Yeah, but other than that, we can be flat or fully in and and not really, you know, make a wave. We ain't even going to be a ripple. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think uh, across the board, if everybody could trade less and hold things longer, I think that's a blanket statement for 99% of the traders that I've ever worked with. Do you find yourself... That's what got... Go ahead. I was was going to say, you must trade... Quite, I mean, a lot less than you did 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Oh, yeah. Right. Because you're not yeah, trying to make for, it happen. I, you're letting the market work. I just look for what I consider to be bigger, better opportunities. And, and, you know, I guess you basically say take a position. And if it doesn't, I mean, I've been stopped out of things a couple, two or three you know, times to try to get back in. I mean. Like I say, I got to follow that. I got to follow that risk. Cause like I say, this is my, this is my, this is my retirement. I mean, you know, for me and my, and my, my wife works, but I mean, I want to, you know, I want, I just, I want to be successful. I've succeeded in most other things I've, I've ever done as far as a couple of businesses, except this. And now I have the, I believe I have the abilities and the, and the capital and, and the tools and, with you know your ideas for now to work with to get me to, to keep me going and just keep plateauing up you know just keep getting up to the next level getting up to the next level i love it I'm, kelly i i can't even explain how happy i am for you um i was talking to carrie about this and so when i hear stories like this of, of i know it, it takes a while but but you finding some kind of stability in the market and some confidence moving forward I mean, that's, that's all I could hope for. So um, I'm thrilled for you. I'm thrilled that you seem to really be taking a trading style and, and making it your own and finding what works for you. I think that your work in the psychology aspect and learning about yourself is uh, probably one of the major reasons for your success, that you've been able to stay, stay humble and, and patient. It's great. That and and I didn't used to be a big fan of. Now I don't paper trade, um, but I would encourage anybody who's listening to this, you know, that the main thing that I know you encourage this, and I'm I'm glad that you do, is to either, um, you know, focus on yourself, learn, find a process that works for you, and paper trade. Or if you're not going to paper trade, just take a small amount of money. And I'm not saying that that you don't care if you lose because you should care about any amount of money that you right lose. of course even if you just or like play a, money you know, a, yeah take a thousand dollar account if you if you took options trades where you're only risking a, a couple hundred dollars sure. you know with that or something then you're not you're going to get familiar with the process and Absolutely. you're also going to get the emotional aspect of it because paper trading is one thing but then when you put when for some people they struggle with making the transition from paper to the real thing because now that's the real money on the line and then that presents for them an issue sometimes so just do it small just just build up like prove to yourself like what, like what you, you can, say right prove to yourself that you can make it work i always say even for people that don't like paper trading it's 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 part of discipline if you don't like it succeed and get away from it but prove to yourself that you can make it happen before you go in there and you know we all we all work too hard for the money that we've earned to, to throw it away right. in the market without a complete understanding of what you're doing. It's, I look at it as being unfair to my family. So um, that's what I really think it is to do anything when you're uneducated. It's, it's, it's just dangerous. 
Well, so for a guy that never did it, you know, that coming from him, I would say, well, this is, I'm a perfect example of then how not to do something. You know, <laughs> so, t- so yeah, I mean, I could, I think, you know, I've been thinking here, I could probably write a book. I don't know if it'd be a bestseller about my experience over the years is how not to do it. You know, nobody. It's just the journey, it's just the journey that you took. Your, your, your journey took a while. You know, you started 93, 95, you had a, you had your ups and downs, but it's, it's, it's the journey and it's not looking back and saying, oh, I should have done this. You know, you ended up in this spot for a reason. And, you know, how do you, how do you feel with that account back up to 300 ish versus 50? Well, I'm, I can't tell you that I'm not uh, happy about that. But I also know, you know, that I believe I got a lot of room to work with on the upside. So I believe, you know, that the I'm a kind of guy then, you know, what's I'm back here now, I believe, you know, the sky's the limit. It's all and for anybody else out there too, the only you know, the only limitations are gonna be what you place on yourself, you know, and you not working on the abilities that you have and, and doing the research and believing in yourself. You know, I mean, I you know, that that account then I got like fifty thousand dollars and had a futures account and, and I and I lost that. So I mean, I'm you know I'll be you know be perfectly honest, but I but the thing was, I never I never gave up. I never closed my mind to not learning. I mean, like a different approach to like what what you present. Um, and I've taken stuff from that. I've there's stuff from other places. I mean, and so I just say. And, and you want to spend, and I spend a certain amount of money on educate, educating myself. You know, do I consider it to be a waste? If over time, you know, I figure I'm, I'm 50, I'm going to be 59. I got, you know, a good, hopefully 20 years of life left in me. What can I accomplish? In, you know, what can I accomplish in that time? And my other thing is, you know, I, I have my wife. If something happens to me, I'm an over the road driver. You know, people die every day out there. I realize that. I want, if something happens to me, then I want my wife, besides what she has, to have something that she can take somewhere and manage sure. so that she can have a she can have a retirement. That's, I mean, we have a daughter that's raised. She's fine. She's doing great. That's the other thing that's in the back of my mind. Of course. What, what, what am I going to do, you know, there? How can I take care of my loved ones? Yep, exactly. I don't have a lot of hobbies. I don't. I don't have hobbies. I don't have boats and new trucks and all that stuff. That's not me. Um, so I just want to build up money and manage it. And and I like to be able to do things for for other people. I'm sure like those things you do with your family. You know, we we mainly most people. I think that's the driving force for most people in this type of situation is the accomplishments they can have and then what can they share with other people around. I'm with you. Well, I'll, uh, I, w- I won't keep you. I just want to thank you so much for, uh, for coming on and, and speaking with us. I absolutely know that people are going to get benefit just from hearing your words and, and hearing your journey. And uh, again, I, I couldn't be more, more thrilled for you, for your family. And, uh, you know, I look forward to working together for, for years to come.